But how knows it takes Jesus to set you free? Jesus. You say amen. It takes the touch of the master's hand. Yeah. Praise God. Nobody else. Just one touch. Oh, one touch. It's worth more than a thousand words. One touch of the master on him. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Never forget the hand of God when you got saved. God. And when it remembers when you got saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, how many remembers when you got yes. saved? Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Nothing could never replace that. Change. Nobody can do it but Jesus. That's right. I said nobody can bring that change in your life but Jesus. No other name under heaven, the Bible said, given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. For God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's above every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. 
Amen. You never meet, never need may not bow while they're here on earth. But they're bowing the judgment. Every knee's going to bow. And every tongue, the Bible said, shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God. Nobody be able to resist that mighty power of God standing in judgment. Praise God in the presence of Almighty God. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 Oh, yes, God. But you know it don't bother me to bow here. Amen. It don't bother me to bow while I'm on earth. Come on. Come on. I'm here <laughs> in the altar. But I'm here with Jesus. Come on, God. Praise God. It's a privilege to be able to get on your knees. And talk to the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said it's a privilege. Yes. To be able to get on your knees. Yes. Amen. It ain't a, you know the Buddhists and the Muslims and the Holy Christians and, and all those many, many multiplied thousands and even uh, I believe that man told me one time there was 35. I was talking to a preacher I met in India and he came to Macintosh. And I met him over there and we sat down we were having something to drink and he told me, he said, there are 35 million gods in India. I started to open my mouth and the Lord said, there are more than that in America. And there are a lot of gods that people put ahead of God. I was said, thou shalt have no other God before me, did he? What you worship, what you put your time in with, it can become your God. Amen. Amen. You know, one place in the prophets, God told, they come to God and he said, go and go to the one you've been serving. Yes. Go call on the one you've been serving. What are you calling on me for? You ain't been serving me. I, I ain't been your God till you got in trouble. Yeah. Now why am I suddenly Come on. your God? Come on. Come on. So he said, go and call on the ones that you've been served. Right. Don't call on me. He said, you mean God said that? I mean God said that. <laughs> Amen. So go. You know, you serve on some other gods. You serve Buddha. You serve Mohammed. And then you get in trouble. You want to call on God. That's right. Amen. I mean, how 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 did automatically did you change that quick and find out he was the real one? But God said, "Go and call on the one you've been serving." Didn't he? Amen. Go and call on the one you've been serving. So we need to serve God here, don't we? Amen. Why well, we got the blood running warm in our veins? Yes, sir. We need to give him our life. Yeah. Praise God. Serve him. Live for him. Because one day we'll stand before him. And we'll be judged by a percept of the deeds. Of the deeds we've done in this, this body, whether it be good or evil. And the one thing about the blood of Jesus, it washes away all sins, don't it? What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. This I know that washes me whiter than snow. No other name I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood that Jesus shed is still, like that song we sang, his blood is still flowing. Praise God tonight. From all the way back when Jesus shed his blood at Calvary, the blood of Jesus is still flowing. Praise God. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise God. We're living in uh, perilous times. You know, Paul spoke about perilous times meaning, meaning dangerous times. He said men would be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. 
having a form of godliness. Not God, but having a form of going through the form of worship. It's coming in because they know what to do, but they don't know how to let the Lord have his way. We need to be led by the Spirit in worship, don't we? Not just do it like we always do it, but just let the Spirit have its way. The Bible said God is a Spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. That's in realness. I said that's in realness. So we're going to worship it. we got to worship Him in Spirit and in truth. Praise God. For the Father, he said, seeketh such to worship him. The Father seeketh such to worship him in spirit and in truth. Used to be said a lot, let the Lord have his way. Yes. Praise God. And they're saying, what happened last night? Well, the Holy Ghost took over. Yes. You don't hear much of that anymore. What happened last time in the revival? The Holy Ghost took over. Hey, hey. Next time, what happened last time? The Holy Ghost took over again. Hallelujah. Just, just being open to God, God will surprise you a lot of times. Yeah. Just being open, not to your will, not to your standard, but to God. Yeah. Not to having it framed in your mind yeah. how we're going to do it tonight. But just come open. Oh. Oh, yes. Come on. And say, Jesus, you have your way. Yes. We're here to worship you. Won't you show us how you want to be worshipped tonight? Yes. Put it in me. Put it in my mouth. The song the same. Put in my heart the praises yes. to come out. Yes. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. You'd be surprised to how the Holy Ghost will take over. Come on. You know, a lot of times folks won't let the Holy Ghost take over. They're just sitting their way. They got something they want to do. I ain't got nothing I want to do tonight. Woo! The Father God. Amen. Pray, that's why we should come. Praise God to church with not a thing if within ourselves to do, but we just come to praise and worship Him in spirit and in truth. And there's no telling what direction of what God will do in the service. Yes, yes. Just being open. Yes. Just being open yes. to God. Yes. Just come worshiping, praising, yes. lifting His name up, yes. following Him. Letting the Spirit of God lead. Letting the Holy Ghost fall. Take over. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And that's what we need. Yeah. It's an old-fashioned Holy Ghost taking over. Yeah. Slay us all. Yeah. Knock us all out this way. Yeah. Put us all on the deck. Yeah. Lay us all down flat about yeah. back. Hallelujah. Just do it like he wants to do it. Come on now. That's the way he used to do it, Sister Jody. He done it like he wants to do it. Ooh. Folks are ready to let him do it. They come ready. They come just 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 ready. Whatever direction God wanted to move, he that people was ready for God to move. Yeah. You know, something like some little religions, they they got it all set, you know, they Come with the water and they sprinkle them. They do all this. It's just, just dead religion is what it is. I said it's just dead religion. Praise God. But when the Spirit of God is in the place and people are yielding to the Spirit of God, they ain't no telling who God will use or what God will do. But I'll tell you one thing, people be blessed before you leave church. People, you turn up upside down. Thank God you'll be encouraged to go on with God. You'll be encouraged to serve God. Your faith will be built. And you will have victory in your soul. And that's what God wants us to have. 
Amen. He said, Behold, I give unto you power. Yes, come on. Yes. Tread on serpents, scorpions, over all the power of the enemy. Yes. All of it. Yes. Whatever it is. All of it means what? All. We limit God, folks. Amen. Most time we don't see ourselves having power over all the devil. Just maybe some of it. No, that ain't what he said. He didn't say some of it. A little bit. He said all of it. And we got to step up. Praise God. I said we got to begin to step up like people that believe what he said. Hallelujah. I said it's time we step up and begin to believe what he has said to us. And what he's given us. And begin to exercise our faith. Yes. Now sit back and be afraid. The Bible said, God said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. I didn't give you a spirit of fear, the fear of the devil. Come on. You know where a lot of times the devil gets his ways through fear. That's right. People believe him. That's the truth. Yes. When he tells them. They believe. Come on. It's like God says one thing, the doctor says another. Come on. Fear is what makes you believe the doctor more than you do God. Come on. That's the truth. Jesus said, by my stripes you're healed. Come on. Doctor says you got six months to live. So who are you going to believe? Come on. Come on. Who are you going to believe? Glory. It's time to start believing God. But we're living in, a, in an hour of great attacks of the devil. The devil's attacks are coming in from every direction on God's people. So we got to be set in our hearts. We got to be set in our minds. Like Paul, for I know whom I believe in. I know who my faith is in. I know who I believe in. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. He was totally persuaded. The devil had nothing to conquer him. He told him, said, we're more than conquerors. You're not just a conqueror. He said you're more than yes, conquerors. Yes. And no, this time we start living up to who we are. Come on. Yes, yes. Come on. Born again, children of God, sons of God. This time we start living up, praise God, and taking authority because of who we are. You know, sometimes just because of who you are, it gives you authority. We're who we are in Jesus. Born again, brainwashed. Sons of God. And because of who we are, we got a fart. Who we are in Him. In Jesus. I said of who we are in Him, we have a fart. We have power and we have a fart over the devil. So the doctor says one thing, and you know what? People came, came in. I thought about the, the Zusa Street when they brought that little twelve-year-old girl, burned a, a bones, was, the skin was melted on the bones, and the bones were showing. She had been in the house for. It would have been very easy to panic. But have those that faith don't panic. Faith knows what God will do in the situation you're in. And Sister Carney was 18 years old, and that's who God was using. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I read where one was 30. Sister Carter come to spread. Why didn't why did she spread a blanket over? Her? 
probably to keep unbelief away. She prayed the blanket over and said she just prayed a little simple prayer. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I command this child to be restored, the flesh restored on her body in Jesus' name. And she started smiling. Yes. Her faith was... <laughs> and that child was coming up, dying, screaming, dying. That kind of faith <laughs> to pray that little simple prayer. You know, sometimes we think we gotta just we gotta pray the prayer that will rock the house. Instead of just the prayer of faith. Lord, I believe. I'm asking you to heal. Lord, I'm asking you to heal this child. Heal this. Open these eyes. Open these deaf ears, Lord, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know where we got to where we think we got to say a certain kind of uh, prayer and make a certain kind of move. It ain't about the way you move or uh, uh, where somebody before you moved or uh, uh, how you pray or how you twist your mouth. Uh, or his mouth is twisted now. It's something for help. Twisted now. Something fixed to happen. It ain't that. Praise God. It's faith in God. It's faith in what Jesus did. Thank God at the whipping post. It's believing the word. People fall into all kind of ditches. And it don't it don't accomplish nothing. It don't bring forth no fruit. But faith does. Real, genuine faith in God. He said, have faith in God. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Jesus and the disciples coming by and saw a fig tree. Jesus desired figs on that tree. But it wasn't even fig season. But he desired figs in him. He wanted some figs. He ought to have some figs. You ought to Saw me come and grow me some figs. So Jesus cursed him. But it was, a, it was something greater than just a fig tree. He was talking to Israel. Really. He said, from henceforth you won't bear no fruit. All at once that fig tree just with Peter said, Woo, Lord, how soon did y'all see that? Lord, how soon is the fig tree with it? Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. We make things complicated. It ain't complicated. We make things complicated. That's simple. Simple faith. Simple believe in God. But we fool around and we fill up our lives with complications. How soon is the fig tree withered? Jesus said, have faith in God. You not only will do this to the fig tree. He said, you can say this mountain, the mountain we're standing on. Be thou removed, cast into the sea. It would have to obey you. You have faith and believe. Oh, my God. From the fig tree to a mountain. He said, have faith in God. You not only do that. If you got faith in God to the fig tree. You can speak to the fig tree, but you can also speak to this mountain and say, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have faith and doubt not, it'll have to obey you. That mountain, I'm not talking about a problem. I'm talking about a mountain. Like look up now. Come on. One of the mountains in Montana. Come on. You can say to this man. Yes. And Jesus said it would have to. Not, not said it would have to move like you told him. Yeah. Come on. You tell it to move, yeah. it can't refuse you. Yeah. It would have to move just like you told him. Be thou removed and cast into the sea. So that mountain would have to remove off the ground and go out into the sea. If you have faith and doubt not, 
and just believe. Hallelujah. If I can't just believe. He said all things are possible. All things are possible unto everyone that believes. It's time not to complicate things, but simply just believe God. Simply have faith. Simply believe that God will, that God is, and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. That God will. Praise God. If you ask Him in faith, He said, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe. That you receive it. Come on, do it. And you shall have it. Yes. Come on. Yes, hallelujah. I'll tell you what, real faith is different. It's different. When you don't believe. Come on. Right. You go through the motions. Yes. And knows it's so easy to lean on flesh. Yeah. Lean on the arm of flesh. Right. Little by little. Little by little. A little more, a little more, a little more. And before you know it, you'll be totally trusting in man. Yeah. And not in God. That's right. And the times are coming. It's upon us that only those that's got faith is going to survive. During the time of the mark of the beast, during the time of the tribulation, all that this government's doing right now, trying to force starvation, trying to force all these, or have to force, turn the crops on, forcing these high gas prices. We've got plenty of gas in the ground. Forcing it. On us. What they're trying to do is bring us to the point that people stick their hand out and say, Give me the mark. I gotta eat. And when you take the mark of the beast, you're doomed. Six six six. Well that's what that's where we headed to. That that's what they're trying to form is a one world order. The rulership of the world be on the one hand. And to be like Nebuchadnezzar, like Hitler, to be an evil rulership. I said it'd be evil. That's right. Dictator. Yeah, come on. It's where they rule with fear, where they kill you. They shoot you down if you stand up against them any. Because they won't have to answer to nobody. Come on. It'll be lawless. It'll be all under one head. Be dictatorship. The opening of the borders and all that. It's causing our nation to collapse. See, it's all working. Turning on your crops. Burning down the processing plants. All these meat processing plants and egg processing plants. Burning down just all at once. 10,000 cows died in one week. And then no more died the next week. It's a force. They know what they're doing. And you can see it because there's there's no they ain't they're not answering to nobody. They're doing all this stuff, but they ain't answering to nobody. Nobody's going to jail. That's the truth. Nobody's going to jail, but they're still doing all this. But it's to force us. Into one world government. Come on. But the Antichrist will be the world ruler. Be the mark of the beast. Time of the mark of the beast. You can't buy or sell. You know they had it planned under Hillary. They had it planned that everybody would take her chip and she got president. And next year they had it planned to do that. But God spared us for a season. He didn't let her go in. He spared us from that mark of the beast, folks. 
See, a lot of people are blind in this world. They don't even see God's mercy and God's grace. All they see whether you're Democrat or Republican. Ain't whether you're Democrat or Republican. It's whether you're right or wrong. If you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you're wrong. It don't matter what label you got. That's right. Come on. Either you serve God or you serve the devil. Come on. Right. You can be Baptist. You can be Catholic. You can be Pentecostal. Come on. But yet you serve one or the other. You serve God or the devil. Come on. Right. You got people got a name, but they ain't even saved. Come on. Come on. Right. They'll tell you what they are, but they haven't been born again. Come on. They haven't been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The meat is a snake. There ain't no Christ like attitude whatsoever. There ain't no Jesus spirit whatsoever. There's no humility whatsoever. And those you must be born again. Got to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. But he said, if I can just believe all things are possible. All things are possible on everyone that believes. It's time to put our faith in God. Come on. It's time to believe. Oh, yeah. We're sort of like Abraham and Sarah. A lot of times. But Sarah. She told Abraham, said Abraham, said, You've been telling folks that God's going to bless you. Sand of the sea, the stars of the heaven, you don't even have a son. So you better let me help you out. He knows that God don't need no help out. He just needs folks to believe his word. Put faith in his promises. See, he told Abraham that Sarah was going to have a child. And she wound up and said, look, you ain't even got a son. Let me bring out the handmaid. She brought up Hagar and brought this one. Abraham was willing to settle for Ishmael. He said, oh, that Ishmael would walk before the Lord. But Ishmael was of the bond one. Isaac was of the free one. He said, no, I told you Isaac. And it was what we've got to do is believe God. We've got to believe what God. Think about all the messages and all the prophecy and all the dreams. You can let them die or you can keep them alive by faith. Come on. Right. You can pray and say, God, restore my vision. Come on. Yes. You know, the Bible said, without a vision, you can't see where you're going. Come on now. You don't know where you're going. Without a vision, the people perish. Yes, sir. Yes. That's right. See, you gotta keep, you gotta keep a vision. That's what happened to the children of Israel that lost their vision of Canaan. Come on. They can no longer see the land that God had promised to Abraham after 400 years. I'll visit and I'll bring you out of bondage. And I'll punish the nation that had you in bondage. And I'll take you into the land that's full with milk and honey. Praise God. That place in God. That place that God has prepared for us in the spirit to grow up, to be like Jesus, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what Paul taught us. Put on Jesus. The more you put him on, the more like him you become. The more you put him on, the more like Jesus you become. You preach like him. You heal like him. You talk like him. You yes. preach like him. Yes, Lord. The more you put on Jesus, yes. the more like him you become. The Bible said we shall, we shall be like him, but we shall see him as he is. Yes. Behold what man of love has the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Yes. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. Because we're going to put him on. We're going to put his word on. We're going to put Jesus on. We're going to conquer this old flesh. We're going to crucify it. Hallelujah. And 
we're going to live in Jesus. You know, when this old old man is crucified, the Bible said, he that's dead has ceased from sin. He that's dead, Romans 6, has ceased from sin. When we die out to this old world, we cease from sin. We die out to the flesh, we cease from sin. He told us, he said, old things have passed away, didn't he? Behold, all things are made new. We become new creatures. See, when you're born again, you start growing up in the spirit. See, you're recreated. We're we're God's recreation in Christ Jesus. Come on, that's right. And when you're born again, you're born of the Spirit. Peter said, "We're born again, not a corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God, which liveth in the body forever." And when you're born of that seed, see, watermelon got a seed, okra's got a seed, corn got a seed. God's got a seed. God's seed is the word. And we plant this word in the heart. Matthew 13 is spoke about the heart condition. The condition of the hearts. The sowing of the seed and what kind of grounds it fell on and what kind of grounds would come up and what kind of grounds it wouldn't come up in. He said, the holy soul went forth to sow. The sower was the son of man. The seed was the word of God. Some fell by the wayside. Thousand air come by and plucked it up. Some fell among stone. And the seed didn't have, didn't go down deep enough. It have no deepness of earth. Sun come out and scarce he said, by and by, I said, when the word comes, people are offended. They have no deepness of earth because of the stone, stony ground. Right. He's talking about the heart. Yeah. He's talking about the condition of the heart. Then he said, there's another heart, another garden. He had thorns in it. Put the seed in there and said, the cares of this life. And then thorns choked out the seed that it brought forth no fruit. Come on. Come on. And he said, the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches right. choked the word of God out. And it become unfruitful. Yes. Good seed. Good word of God. Come on. But who knows the grounds have got to be right. That's right. You now good seed, good fertilizer. And just go out there and throw it on top of the ground or throw it among rocks and, and don't really get them rocks out and break that ground up. It ain't no mountain. Right. Garden has to be broke up. Bible said break up the foul grounds of your heart. Break up the foul grounds of your heart and sow not among thorns. The garden's got to be prepared. The grounds has got to be prepared. And the grounds is our hearts. That's why we got to pray and read the Bible. That when the seed of God comes, when God starts sowing the seed of faith, sowing the seed of miracles, sowing the seed of the Holy Ghost, Come on. Yeah. that your grounds will be ready. That that seed will go down in your heart. He also said there was another garden too. They sowed the seed. It was good ground. Man had a good and honest heart. Praise God. And that, see, that ground brought forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. But it's the kind of grounds, it's the kind of hearts we got. That's the grounds. That, that's, that's what the seed has to go into the ground. You know, you, you can put the seed up on the man of peace. He can be a good seed. But it ain't going to bring forth nothing until you put it in the ground. That's right. You got to sow it. Yeah. Behold, a sower went forth to sow. The sower was the son of man, and the seed was the word of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And when that word, when that seed comes up, it produces yeah. another of what that one comes out. 
Right. You know, Jesus said, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, you take that one seed. Jesus was that one seed yes. in the earth. You take one seed, plant it. It comes up. You take that one stalk, plant a row. You take that row and plant a field. You take that field and plant the world. But it all came from one seed. Each seed brings forth after it's kind. The word of God won't make nothing else. Will make you like nothing else but Jesus. Yes, come on. That that comes up in you by the sword of the word of God. It'll make you just like what that seed come out of. Because it was planted in you. You came forth. And you brought forth. And when you bring forth and you plant seed in other people's hearts. They too will bring forth oh, that's right. that same yeah, Jesus on, that you came from. Amen. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Being born again of the Spirit. Can you say amen? amen. Or don't you love it? Yes. I said don't you appreciate it? Amen. Thank you Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. But he said have faith in God. Yes. You know not only would do this to the fig tree but you can say to this mountain be thou removed and cast into the sea. You would have to obey. See, Sarah and Abraham was nine and a hundred. And the Bible said they were good as dead. Come on. But when the angel showed up to encourage her, and he told Abraham, said, Abraham, Sarah's going to have that child now. That was after Ishmael done born. And Abraham said, oh, that Ish would walk before the Lord. God said, no, Isaac. Then the angel showed up, praise God, and told Abraham, said, Sarah's going to have that child. And Sarah's in the back there, and she laughed. She laughed. She was nine, and Abraham was a hundred. Yeah. And the angel said, Abraham, what's Sarah doing laughing? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? Is there anything too hard for the Lord? You know, if you're not careful, you lose your vision. And you start losing sight of revival. Start losing sight of what God promised. And, and it's like I was saying a while ago, without a vision, the people perish. You quit believing. You quit believing that God's going to do. Just like the children of Israel, 400 years passed. 400 years passed. But God still brought his word to pass. And you know what God told them? I'm going to take you in. But they got right out there in the wilderness. After God did exactly. After 400 years, brought them out. But the Bible said brought them out with silver and gold. Told them to slay a lamb. Put the blood on the doorpost and roast the whole lamb and eat the whole lamb. Don't gut it. Eat everything. Representing the word of God. Yes. How many of us we need to eat it all? Yes. We don't need to gut it. We don't need to take it out and say, we don't believe like this. We don't need this. You know, they're revising the Bible. Every time they revise it, they gut some out of it. Come on. But the Bible said, don't gut it. Eat the whole lamb. Yeah. Roast him all. Yeah. Roast the whole lamb. Don't gut him. Yeah. The Bible said they killed the lamb, put the blood on the doorpost. He said at midnight, the death angels will to pass over. And when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. See, that blood of that lamb represented Jesus. And that lamb body represented Jesus' body, which is the word of God. That's why he said, eat the whole lamb. Yes. Told John to eat the whole book. Bitter to his Come on. Eat the whole row. Bitter to his sweet to his mouth, but bitter to his belly. 
The Bible says that they put the blood on the doorpost and roasted that lamb and ate the whole lamb. At midnight, the death angel came through. And every house that had the blood on the doorpost, that death angel went by. But he went down to the Egyptians' houses that didn't have the blood. And the firstborn, he slew the firstborn out of every, even the Pharaoh's house. But the Bible said he brought them out with silver and gold. And there wasn't one feeble one among their tribe. Nobody was sick. They weren't even feeble. Out of three and a half million people. Why? Because they ate the lamb. They ate the word. Hallelujah. They ate the word of God. They ate Jesus. And the heavens, the word of God will heal you. He said, I sent my word and I healed them. I sent my word and I healed them. They came out with silver and gold. They, they would ask the magician, can I have that? Yeah, take it. Can I have, yeah, take anything you want. Get out of here before God kills us all. He brought them out with silver and gold. And there wasn't one feeble one among their tribe. Praise God. Three and a half million people. Every last one of them was made whole. Every last one of them. Whatever disease they had. They were crippled. Or feeble. When they eat that lamb, there wasn't a feeble one among them. They walked out. They didn't have to be brought out on stretches. They walked out. Praise God. God healed them all. He said, I bless your bread and I bless your water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Do you believe God's going to have a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle? And she's not going to be sick either, folks. Amen. See, that would be cutting short what Jesus paid for. See, before Jesus went to the cross, they tied him to the whooping pole. They put 39 stripes on his back. And there in the book of Isaiah, he said, By my stripes. Ye are healed. By my stripes. Ye are. Not maybe. Not my. But are healed. That's right. He said there in the fifty third chapter, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Praise God. Who has believed our report? The report about Jesus. Report about his coming. Report about the Messiah. Praise God. Amen. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? That's Jesus. Can you say amen? Amen. This he said, for he shall grow up like a tender plant. And as a root out of dry ground, he has no form, not comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You know, he, he's not like religion is today. He come riding. Zachariah said, Behold, your king cometh riding on the fold of an ass, meek and lowly. And you know, we need some more of them donkey preachers. Not these limousine and jet airplane preachers. This donkey preacher had power, didn't he? Come on. We need some donkey preachers. Amen. We need some men humble. Praise God. Come riding in. On the fold of an ass. Zachariah said, meet him lowly. Yeah. Come on. Riding on the fold of an ass. He's despised. And rejected. <laughs> we'll back up verse 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. As a root out of dry ground. He has no form, no confidence. He wasn't no Hollywood style preacher. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised, rejected a man a, of sorrow, a man of sorrow, and acquainted with grief. We hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our 
griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. He paid the price, folks. Yes, Jesus not only died for our sins, he took a whooping for our sicknesses. And I believe with all my heart. And I thought about when they brought the man to Jesus and couldn't get to him on a stretcher. They climbed up on the housetop and tore a hole in the roof and let the man down at Jesus' feet. I mean, they had to have faith to go through all that. Yeah. They wanted to tore the man's roof off. Come on. Come on. Hey. But they tore the man's roof off. They couldn't get to Jesus because they were strong in him. That's right. But they climbed up on the housetop, tore a hole in the house. They were desperate. This man was desperate. And they were desperate with him to get a miracle. Amen. Yeah. And you know what? Jesus called it faith. Come on. Hey. He called him climbing. He called it climbing up on the house, tearing the roof off, letting the man down. He called it faith. Yes. He didn't say you bunch of destructive hypocrites tearing this man's roof hey. off. Hey. Come on now. He didn't say nothing about the roof. The, the roof wasn't an important thing. There was a man sick. There was a man needing a miracle. How did Jesus did he mention the roof? Bible said when Jesus saw their faith, yeah. it moved him. When he saw all that they went through, these men had to believe that I could heal to go through what they're going through yeah. to get this man to me. Yeah. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man sick of the policy, Son, he didn't tell him to be healed. He said, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's right. Yeah. Take up your bed. They started hollering, who, who, Who's this man yeah. that can forgive sin? Jesus said it like this. What's it easy to say? Thy sins be forgiven thee. I take up your bed and walk. When I save you, I heal you. When I heal you, I save you. Come on. Yeah. Son, he didn't say be healed. He said, son, thy sin be forgiven thee. Come on. Come Take on. up your bed and walk. Praise God. When I save you, I heal you. When I heal you, I save you. Come on. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But we got to believe it. Hallelujah. It's got to be the gospel to us. That's right. It's been a lost. It's been a lost part of the gospel not being preached to people. That when God saves you, it's the same faith that heals you. So he told the man, he didn't tell the man to be healed. He said, son, thy sin be forgiven thee. Take up your bed and walk. So it was the same. He didn't say be healed, take up your bed and walk. He said, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Take up your bed and walk. Yes. Now the Pharisees didn't like it. Because they said, who is this man that can forgive sins? He said, what's it easy to say? Thou sin be forgiven you. Take up your bed and walk. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. That's right. Surely he's born a... He's despised, rejected a man, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid us our faces from him. Didn't want a part of him. Be a part of that. He was despised and we esteemed him not. You know, most people don't want to do about it, despise and reject it. Acquainted with grief. He said, we, we hid it where our faces from you. We were ashamed of it. We were ashamed of it. Jesus said, if you be ashamed of me before this, even the dogs of generation, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father and his holy angels.
He's a spider, rejected man, man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. We hid it to our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. The world despised him. We didn't lift him up. Surely he is born. At the same time, he went through all that. And he said, surely he's born our griefs and carried our sorrow. It was our sorrow. See, he was acquainted with grief. The grief that separated from people was our grief because he took our sorrows. He took our griefs. He never knew no sin. I know God was ever found in his mouth. What made him like he was was us. And people despise him because he became what he was because of us. He took on our sins. He took on our sorrows. He took on our sicknesses. He took on our griefs. He bore our sins and our sorrows. He bore. He carried them to the cross. He bore them stripes on his back. And with his stripes, by his stripes, we're healed. It's been paid for. Just like our sins, it's been paid for. we got to believe it the same way. Oh, yes, I believe it. Jesus washed my sins away. In the same faith, Jesus just beating on his back for your head. If I can just believe all things are possible. Surely born our griefs carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our nickel. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He took it, folks. He took our sorrows and gave us peace. The chastisement of our peace. He was chastened and beat for us that we could have peace, that we could be well, we could be healed. And with his stripes, we are healed. Praise God. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. All we like sheep has gone astray. All of us have gone our own way somewhere. Come on. But he said the Lord laid it on him. Put it on him. Our transgressions. Our sins. Our sorrows. He bore us. Where we could come back. He bored where we could fall on our knees and say, I'm sorry, and come back to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He didn't grumble like us. God is going to do this. Come on. <laughs> He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He bore it. Bore it. Not his, ours. He could. 